This may... people may think, oh, this is superstitious. Well, what you think is superstition, believe me, in another... now that we have uh, this research center going, we'll focus on these things. You will see in another ten years, you will find medical evidence for this. You will find because we know this is how it works. This... this nobody can dispute because we know from experience this is how it works. in your view, is the fundamental cause of mental disorders? Uh, if you're asking for one cause... Well, there could be many. <laughs> there are too many. If you want me to list it a little bit, I can't list all of them. See, one thing is the way we eat. It's a very big part of mental illness. The way we are ingesting chemicals and hormones today unconsciously at various levels is a serious part of mental illnesses of this generation. How we ingest, how we take food in. Uh, this may sound little far-fetched for the UK, but please listen to me carefully. We... we look at life like this. You are who you are as a person. You are who you are because of the parentage that you had, the schools that you went to, the education that you had, now the exposure that you have in your life, that's why you have become this kind of a person, isn't it? It's all many, many things receiving. So all the times you're receiving, what you're receiving is not just information and thought. Life receives in so many levels, on the energetic level it receives. So in India we see that anywhere if you want to receive something, first thing is you cross your legs. All right? Right now I'm sitting that way, it may not be visible to you. But uh, first thing is cross your legs because we don't want to receive from the lower part of our body. We want to receive... anything positive means we want to receive from the upper part of our body. So if you go to some place where we think it's energetically strong, first thing is we cross our legs and keep our hands open because we want to receive from the dimensions which represent you know, in the yogic physiology, it's like this. There are uh, 112 chakras, 114, but actually 112 within the human system. Out of these 112, there are seven categories of them, 16 in each one of them. These seven are generally known in the world today as chakras. So the first three are survival processes. And the in-between one, is uh, representing a meeting of this. It is from here on, from Anahata onwards, which is enlightening processes of life. That dimension of life may not open up for most human beings, but at the same time, though there is no specific practice or intention within them, just by education, just by focus, just by attitude, you might have become, you know, Every human being is evolving themselves at their own pace. The question is, they are consciously evolving at a rapid pace or are they going slowly? But nobody can say that I've been the same since I was ten years of age. We are all evolving in some way, in our understanding, in our experience, in our perception, in our wisdom. Every one of us are evolving. But spirituality, what it means is, because we understand we are mortal in nature and our time is very limited, we want to evolve as fast as we can. Everywhere in the world, in every language, <laughs> this... Uh, many sayings are there like this, to suggest that wisdom comes only in old age. Isn't that a terrible waste of wisdom and life? Wisdom should happen at the earliest part of your life. That is when you can really enjoy your life, that is when you can create a wonderful life. Wisdom happened just three days before you died. What is the point of this wisdom? Maybe it's still useful, I'm not saying it's not useful, but it would be far more useful, it came when you were twenty years of age, you became wise. Oh, you would build a fantastic life, isn't it? So in that sense, it is important you receive certain things in uh, certain ways. Food is considered 
very basic level of reception, how we receive food. What we receive is very important. Today, what are we receiving? Right now, as you see societies get more and more affluent, they start eating worse and worse food. What a rural person in India would not touch, very sophisticated cities are eating that kind of food. When I say that kind of food, almost anything that Western societies are using today are a minimum thirty to sixty days old. In yoga, their food is classified as sattva, rajas and tamas. Tamas means inertia. If you eat anything which has tamas, inertia will come in your system. Inertia does not mean you just become lazy. Inertia means certain things slow down. Certain things means essentially regeneration of the system slows down. Today you know that neural… Uh, neuronal regeneration is one of the most important aspect of keeping your brain reasonably functionable, functional throughout your life. The practices, you know, were the simple practices that we are teaching as a part of Inner Engineering program. Now studies have been done by various universities in US, now they've set up uh, the Beth Israel uh, Medical Center with the Harvard… Uh, in the M Harvard Medical School, has sent up… Uh, set up a center called Sadhguru Center for Conscious Planet. The idea is uh, consciousness, cognition and compassion. Because cognition is not the same from person to person. Why is it so? There are various aspects to it. Now that I'm talking about food, if you're consuming foods which are tamasic, or causes inertia in the general function of your system, in the energetic process of who you are, then you will see cognition level slowly will go down over a period of time. And to instigate that, to… because everybody understands this, this is why they're drinking cups and cups of uh, Coca-Cola or coffee or alcohol or something else because they know they need to balance that. So this kind of balance, uh, is a very rudimentary way of balancing your system, that you're putting wrong things and then you're trying to correct it with right things. The highest number of uh, antacids in the world, nearly sixty percent of the world's antacids are so sold in America, the most affluent population on the planet. This means they have a whole choice of nourishment. They can eat the best food, but no, they will eat the worst food because commercial forces will decide what you eat. You cannot eat consciously anymore what you want to eat. Just I'm saying, if everything becomes fresh food, in the yogic culture, if you cook something, the maximum time in which you can eat it is one and a half hours, ninety minutes. Before that, you should have eaten the food. After that, we won't touch the food because it has started gathering tamas, inertia will begin to happen. If you want to experiment, you can experiment, use something… eat something very fresh for one week, eat something which is processed and kept for one month, two months and then eat it, you will see the level of alertness in the system, you will notice it in your experience. But it is happening at the cellular level, it is happening in terms of… we call this ojas, there is no English word for that. If you create sufficient ojas, which is a non-physical dimension of energy, if every cell in your body is wrapped in this, believe me, your aging process is almost… will not progress. Your cellular age will almost remain stag stagnant for a long period of time. Some of the tests they have done on me and, uh, <laughs> you know, they are saying that I'm… my cellular age is twenty-five. Well, I still am like twenty-five, I'm maintaining the same level of activity, I'm maintaining the same weight, same everything. This is not some miracle. Every human being is capable of this with some simple attention to fundamental things. Going further in terms of food, there is something called as viruddha ahara, <clears throat> that means if you eat one thing and put another thing which works opposite to that, then in your system there is a war. You know digestive process is largely between acids and alkalines and all this stuff. So if you put things like this, mixed up together, right now, uh, because… Uh, because the British have taken a lot to the Indian food, I see Indian curry and Indian restaurants doing very well out there. For example, you eat meat which is fatty. If you ate it by itself, it may not cause that much damage. But you ate that with rice and ghee, you call that biryani and you ate it. 
Now the damage is big because these two things will not go together. The m this is why any... any non-vegetarian food and milk and milk-related food were never mixed, because the moment you mix it, it will go opposite to each other and you create a battle within yourself. Battle means just this, if you eat food, in the yogic culture, food should not... should not remain in your stomach bag for more than two and a half hours. Within two and a half hours, it should have moved out, you must be feeling empty stomach. Hunger will not come, empty stomach will come. And that is good, we want our stomach to be always empty, because in an empty stomach, everything works well. And the colon health is something that's completely neglected today. If you do not keep your colon clean, keeping your mind in a balanced state is very, very difficult. So in Ayurveda and Siddha, first thing, if you say anything, you are having sleepless nights, you are having uh, disturbed something, mild, any kind of psychological problems, first thing is purging. Purge the system, clean the colon, suddenly you feel little balanced. It is not a whole solution, but it'll bring the basic ne necessary atmosphere in the body to make the corrections, either with medicine or with necessary practices, you can bring about correction. So how we eat, how are our mothers ate when she had the responsibility of nurturing another life, how she ate, how she did things, all these things have significance. We are not taking care of food, we are not taking care of our practices, how we breathe, how we drink, how we do things. No. When we eat, always we want our legs to be folded because we don't want to receive from lower level of body. This may... people may think, oh, this is superstitious. Well, what you think is superstition, believe me, in another... now that we have uh, this research center going, we'll focus on these things. You will see in another ten years, you will find medical evidence for this. You will find, because we know this is how it works. This... this nobody can dispute, because we know from experience, this is how it works. But evidence you can find... see, somebody commits a crime, it takes ten years to prove. Does it mean to say murder happened after ten years? No, murder happened. There's no doubt about that, but evidence building may take time. Right now, medical sciences are going in that way, that they want to build evidence for everything that we know by experience. It is good, it gets... it gets... Uh, it gets a undisputable kind of uh, legacy later on. That's a good thing to do, this research must happen, I'm not against that. But the important thing is to observe life the way it happens within myself because this is the closest life that you have. In your life, this is the closest life. If you do not know what's happening here, how do you notice what's happening with somebody else? Just by external observation, by gathering... you know, the gathering data about various things and coming to conclusions, that may work sometimes, but a whole lot of time it does not work because that's not how a human being is made. You cannot add up uh, lungs, liver, kidney, spleen and make a human being. You cannot add up all these things and make a person either. Well, you can get one rough picture, with that you can do treatments and works. But there is no question, there is relevance to every dimension of life. How do we apply this to a person who is suffering right now? That needs a compassionate approach, not a standard approach, my way or your way. It's a very silly way to go at it that this is the only way it can be done, because that's not how human beings are. Something very simple, I'm telling you, children especially with lot of mental ailments, I look at them and they say, they don't need any yoga, nothing, he's not going to do yoga, nothing, put him into swimming classes, put him into tennis classes, send him trekking in the mountains. Within six months, they're doing fine, you know? All they needed was that activity and exposure to nature and something to focus on intensely, something to get involved, spend the... expand their energy in a certain way. This all they needed. But instead of that, if we put them on medication at that time, that may become a lifelong problem. So, taking a judicious action, there is no perfect action. Nobody has perfect action anywhere. A judicious action of what could be maximum right rather than wrong, more right than wrong is all you can do. I don't think anybody has an absolute right about mental uh, conditions that people are in. Guru, thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Sadhguru. And, uh, and I'm sorry to use that word again, but uh, thought-provoking discussion, food for thought and thought for food as well. And uh, really quite interesting. And of course, mental disorder, ser serious mental disorder, which is of course where... There are various kinds of disorders which are celebrated because he, you asked a question about spirituality. There are various kinds of disorders which are hold as sacrosanct and celebrated in the world. This happened in a mental asylum in United States. A bishop came there and he was giving a lecture. A room full of, you know, uh, inmates of the asylum, not a single one was paying attention, they were all busy with their own things, picking nose, picking ears, picking whatever they wanted to. Only one guy in the front row was, without blinking an eyelid, he was just watching and listening intensely. Towards the end of the talk, that guy who was watching the bishop closely and listening to every word, he called the doctor who was in attendance and whispered something to him. Then the session got over, they all left. Then the bishop had a hard time speaking for one hour to a group of people who not one is paying attention except one person. Then he was interested and he asked the doctor, what? That guy was the only one who was listening to me, what did he say? So the doctor said, he asked, how come he is out and I am in? Profound. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, uh, Sadhguru, of course, uh, what you said uh, earlier is very important that one approach isn't what uh, helps. It's a combination of approaches and, and people who have serious mental disorders, of course, that commonality of, of approach in various ways, you know, medication, meditation, uh, and proper societal support and themselves taking ownership of what they eat, what they drink, and the drugs that they take, all of that is really important. So, really profound. We... Above all, as a generation of doctors, all of you, uh, I know it's not just in the hands of you four people or a uh, hundred people that are there, but as a generation of people, we should strive to create uh, a culture of health, which includes physiological and psychological health. That is not going to happen overnight. We have to strive for that. The way we eat, the way we sit, the way we stand, the way we breathe, all these things need to be looked at. This is what the yogic system is about, that if you take care of all these things, definitely you will be healthy, both physiologically and psychologically. But that is not just, cannot be done just as individual level, it can be done easily, but cannot be done to the entire society or to the world just like that. It may take a couple of generations to bring that. That is why I see this pandemic as a possibility. At least with this little bit of outside threat, people may turn inward and look, what am I doing with myself? Indeed, that's such a, such a profound thing to say. So thank you very much. And uh, obviously as captain of your ship, I took the privilege of inviting my wife, Jaswinder, again, because uh, we. I thought that it's very important that she comes and she's able to say... Uh, uh, captains who is so distracted can crash the ship. I'm glad you did not. <laughs> <laughs> Namaskaram, ma. Namaskaram uh, to you, both of you. In, in the safe hands of all of you, Sadhguru, and I'm, <laughs> I'm very grateful to you for taking time out. Uh, uh, of course, on a Sunday, I'm very grateful also to my colleagues, Adrian, Ananta, and Swaran, who, uh, who've engaged in this discussion. Uh, I hope we can discuss this again. I think there's lots of scope to take this further. And, um, you know... I know there is a... there is a rampant uh, pandemic situation in UK. All of you stay safe and healthy, and uh, a lot of people's lives depend on you, so please stay well yourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.